All right, folks, I've got uh, somebody I'm helping them uh, with an image um, that they need to manipulate in Whisperer. And uh, I figured while I was making this for them, I would uh, make it available to everybody. You might find it helpful. Um, we've got an S, uh, a vector file that I'm going to import here. Okay. And, and it's this. So I'm going to drag it over. And what they want to be able to do is uh, raster or, engra or raster engrave uh, the orange areas and then cut an outline around the blue border. Okay, and this image is not set up to do that. So this is an SVG file. It is a vector. Um, it's all grouped together right now. So what I'm going to do is just right click over the image and ungroup. And it's still not a part. So I'm going to keep ungrouping until I get the boxes around everything. Now I know that I've got it uh, loose. See? Control Z. Get rid of that. So, um, in K40 Whisper, black is raster engraved, so we need to turn all the orange black, so I'm going to hold down Shift or Control, no, Shift, and select all of the orange pieces and make them black. Simple enough, right? Now, this vector area or the outline rather needs to be red so I'm gonna go up here and drag this red all the way over and drag everything else down to zeros and now that's red now right now that's a fill and it won't it, uh, it, it, it won't see this fill in vector um, it'll see a stroke okay so what I'm going to do is give it stroke. And yeah, that looks crazy right now. Uh, and it does need to be red. And I, I think we're red. That looks red. 255. Yeah, that's red. Um, we need to get rid of the fill. Now, if you'll notice, it looks real strange right now. It's because the line is real thick. So what we need to do is go over to stroke style and, and just bring it down. And you'll see. And, and, for our in all intents and purposes right here it doesn't matter if it's 2.5 or whether it's 0.5 uh, and the reason is it looks at the center of the vector line it goes right down the center of the line so cutting this out it doesn't really matter how fat the uh, line is it's it's going to go in the same place that's not always the case but in this one it is so i'm just going to get it down to 0.5 just because that's what i'm used to that way we can just see it okay now Red is cut, black is engraved. This will do what they want it to do. Now there's one other thing. If we go to import this into K40 right now, it's not gonna see this outline still. We have to convert it to a path. So we're gonna select it and go up to path and take the object and go object to path, okay? Now let's save it as drawing one, okay? Now, we can go into K40 and open a design file and go to drawing one and open it. Now, this is an important lesson. I knew this was going to happen. I, I wasn't making that up. I did this live on YouTube and I forgot that I didn't have my microphone on. So I'm actually, this is the second time I'm doing it. It took a long time and look at all this extra white space. Okay. That's not what you want. So we're going to we're going to close that. Let's go back to Inkscape. I want to show you a, a neat trick in Inkscape you always need to do. Uh, the guys from Scortzworks actually told me about this. So thank you guys for that. Um, let's open our project that we were just in. Drawing one. Now see how the page is way bigger than the object or the, the file. So if you go over here to edit and go down, you'll see resize page to selection. If you click that, it gets rid of all your extra white space. It makes the, the page size just big enough to fit the object on. Now we're going to resave. Okay. Now we'll open K40 Whisperer back up. Open a design file. I don't have my laser initialized. I'm running a Cohesion Mini in it, not the uh, Nano board. So go to Desktop, Find Drawing 1, open it. And it won't take nearly as long. And there's your there's your image. Okay. Now you'll have to know how big this is. You'll want to resize it in Inkscape. 
okay? You, you don't have any editing ability in, in K40 Whisper at all. So you need to pay attention to how big this is and shrink it in Inkscape and get it to the right dimensions before you export it, which also means you need to be working on Inkscape in millimeters. Uh, there is a conversion. It'll do the conversion, but uh, it's taken me a long time too, but I've started thinking in millimeters. So uh, you need to adjust your, let's go back and open. Drawing one. Uh, let, we're going to select it all, right click, and group it, okay? That way, when we go to adjust it, it'll all move together. Now, I'm not holding down shift, so it's going to change the aspect ratio. So I believe if I hold down shift, yeah, no, shift didn't do it. Is it control? Yeah, it's control. Hold down control when you move it and it won't change. It'll keep, it'll lock your uh, X and Y so that the proportions stay the same. I kind of screwed that up. But adjust your size there and you can see up at the top what your size is. How many millimeters wide uh, width and height is right here. So you can, and you can even type it in up here if you want. So go ahead and resize it uh, before you get it over there. But now that it's here, you want to engrave first. So you'll click raster engrave. It'll look at all the black data, send that part of the job to the laser. Of course, it's not going to do anything for me. Um, and then when you're done, you hit vector cut and it'll send the vector data over to it and cut it out. Notice you can change, you can't change your, your powers here uh, with the nano but you can change your speed. So you can have your raster engrave, you know, up to 500 or something like that. Um, and then you can set your speed down low enough to cut on the vector. And if you have to, you can adjust your power in between. That's why you have a choice to uh, activate these separately. So I hope that helps. Uh, Tech Bravo coming to you from the global headquarters of Bravo Technologies. And I'm out.